believe to talk to you about the European integration and the constitutional identity of North Macedonia. Uh, this top, I choose this topic because I have done some research on this topic uh, regarding that um, my country, North Macedonia, in history recognized as only Macedonia, was is uh, you know is as, as an exemplary of uh, constitutional changes in order to become a full member of NATO alliance and the European Union in past 30 years. This lecture, as I said, is derived from a scientific work of combined research based on the content analysis method, comparative analysis and the online survey method, aimed at investigating the changes of the constitutional identity of Republic of North Macedonia during its integration path, filled with many obstacles, challenges and constraints. Moreover, this lecture aims to identify the European Union's hypocritical attitude towards the integration process of North Macedonia concerning the sacrifices that North Macedonia made regarding its major constitutional changes, at first with the Ohrid Framework Agreement and the change of its national name with the PRESPA Agreement. The European Union hypocrisy and incapability as well is more obvious with the Bulgarian blockade for opening negotiation talks with North Macedonia, which came as a cold shower for the allies and the proponents of the Macedonian fully integration in the European Union structures. Therefore, within the today presentation, I will try to present the main and major changes of the constitution of the Republic of North Macedonia since its independence for uh, three, uh, 30 years ago until today, and to describe the sacrifices that North Macedonia made for joining the European Union. I, I will start from the European Union value set or axiological set. Therefore, considering the European Union values, uh, values the Lisbon Treaty in Article 1a stipulates that, I will quote this article, the union is founded on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law, and respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minorities. These values are common to the member states in a society in which pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity, and equality between women and men prevail. This treaty, prescribe the systematized axiological or value framework that requires the European Union and its member states to affirm and respect its values. In turn, as it is stated in Article 4 of the Treaty on European Union, uh, open quotation mark, the Union shall respect the equality of member states before the treaties as well as their national identities inherent in their fundamental structures, political and constitutional, inclusive of regional and local self-government. Pursuant to the principle of sincere cooperation, the Union and the member states shall, in full mutual respect, assist each other in carrying out tasks which flow from the treaties. Close quotation marks. It should be borne in mind that the European Union values are not always named as values, but sometimes they referred by terms such as objectives, tasks, principles, duties, etc., etc., which have an indisputable axiological or value essence for the Union. Moreover, it is very important to stress that values are normally standards beyond the law. The Treaty on European Union specified the European Union values in Article B, stating that the European Union shall promote economic and social progress, which is balanced and sustainable, in particular through the creation of an area without international internal borders, through the strengthening of economic and social cohesion and the establishment of economic and monetary union, ultimately including a single currency following the provisions of the Treaty on European Union. Likewise, the treaty establishing a constitution for Europe in Article uh, 2, Chapter 1, listed the, the, the following values, such as 
respect for human dignity, liberty, democracy, equality, the rule of law, and respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minorities. This treaty also confirmed the values of the previous treaty establishing the European community, such as promotion of scientific and technological development, opposition to social exclusion, the promotion of social justice and social protection, equality between man and woman, solidarity, the promotion of economic, social, and territorial cohesion, and respect for cultural and linguistic differences. Furthermore, Article 21 of the Lisbon Treaty noted that the European Union actions on the international stage shall be guided by the principles which have inspired its own creation, development, and enlargement, and which it seeks to advance in the wider world, such as democracy, the rule of law, the universality and divisibility of human rights and fundamental freedoms, respect for human dignity, the principles of equality and solidarity, and respect for the principles of the United Nations Charter and international law. This article also confirms that the European Union shall define and pursue its common policies and actions and shall work for a higher degree of cooperation in all fields of international relations to achieve the following objectives safeguard its values, fundamental interests, security, security, independence and integrity, consolidate and support democracy, the rule of law, human rights and the principles of international law, preserve peace, prevent conflicts and strengthen international secu security in accordance with the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter. In the meantime, the preamble of the Charter for Fundamental Rights of the European Union additionally determines the member states in the European Union to strengthen the protection of fundamental rights, conscious of its spiritual, spiritual and moral heritage. The Union is founded on the indivisible universal values of human dignity, freedom, equality, and solidarity. It is based on the principles of democracy and the rule of law. Hence, Professor Jan Manners, one of my favorite authors of and father of the concept of normative power Europe, stated that the European Union represents neither a civilian power of an intergovernmental nature utilizing economic tools, nor a military power of a supranational nature using armed force, but a normative power of an ideational nature characterized by common principles. This kind of power had its basis directly derived from the European Union values, as I said, which are developed over the past 50 years through a series of declarations, treaties, policies, criteria, conditions, etc., etc., which comprise the European Union acquis communautaire and the acquis politique. Therefore, it is crucial to emphasize that the most powerful tool for imposing the European Union's normative power is the membership membership itself. The European Union norms and values are not simply declaratory aims of a system of governance, but represent crucial constitutive features of a polity, which creates its identity as being more than a state. On this basis, the procedural diffusion of the European Union normative power appears as an extraordinary channel for the diffusion of new values and norms to other actors, such as states, or international organizations. This channel of norms and diffusion of values concerns the institutionalization of relationship between the European Union and other actors, in this case, the Republic of North Macedonia. Or as Jan Mayers once emphasized, procedural, procedural diffusion involving symbolic and substantial normative power involves the institutionalization of a relationship between the European Union and a third party, such as an interregional cooperation agreement, membership of an international organization, or enlargement of the European Union itself. The acceptance of the Copenhagen criteria in the process of accession of new member states into the European Union is stated as the most powerful instrument for the direct establishment of the European Union value system or establishment and implementation of the European Union values, and thus a typical manifestation of the procedural diffusion of European normative power. As we know, the Copenhagen criteria stipulate that 
membership requires that the candidate country has achieved stability of institutions, guaranteeing democracy, the rule of law, human rights, and respect for and protection of minorities, the existence of a functioning market economy, as well as the capacity to cope with competitive pressure and market forces within the union. Membership presupposes the candidate's ability to take on the obligations of membership, including adherence to the aims of political, economic, and monetary union. The integration process and consequently the accession of the Republic of North Macedonia to the European Union involve a series of accepted and implemented declarations, policies, criteria, and conditions aimed at achieving the full consistency, consistency of the Macedonian normative and value system with that of the European Union. The Republic of North Macedonia has been participating in the stabilization and association process since 1999. The Stabilization and Association Agreement with the European Union, signed in 2001, sets the framework for relations with the European Union, including political, economic, and technical dialogue. The procedural diffusion of normative power means the capacity of the European Union to impose its norms and values through procedural or institutional means. In the case of the Republic of North Macedonia, one can detect double standards in the overall accession process, as well as the use of more political than legal force in a revising, reforming, or changing the Macedonian constitutional identity as evidenced by most serious revisions of the Macedonian constitution in the last 30 years. Such interventions provoked serious distortions and transformations in the overall Macedonian political system, especially with the Ohrid Framework Agreement, and accompanied by serious revisions of the Macedonian constitutional identity elements. Therefore, I will try to present some changes of the Constitutional Republic of Macedonia with special emphasis on the two major revisions, uh, namely, the constitutional revision derived from the Ohrid Framework Agreement in 2001 as a revision which was triggered by internal inter-ethnic factors and the revision made due to the name change as a revision triggered by the external factor in the light of resolving the name dispute with Greece. Also, I will try to introduce the preliminary impulses of the Bulgarian triggered clash over the Macedonian national and ethnic identity, which possibly can lead to another change of the Macedonian constitutional identity in the future. All of these constitutional revisions and interventions seriously change the constitutional identity of the Republic of North Macedonia, which is reflected in the change of the Macedonian political system and also the name of the country. Taking into account the fact that the constitutional identity as a notion is a flexible term for which there is no concrete or comprehensive definition. The notion of constitutional identity in this lecture, in this presentation will be treated as a normative concept primarily understood as the identity of the constitution itself with decisive consequences to the political system. For the most famous European philosopher, Jürgen Habermas, the concept of constitutional identity is not an independent theoretical concept in itself, but a corollary to the idea of constitutional patriotismus, or Verfassung patriotismus in German, namely that the identity of a nation, of citizen, is not only related to the essential constitutional principles such as human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. This approach focuses on the relationship between values, constitution, and a political system of a particular country, in this case, the Republic of North Macedonia and its constitutional and systemic accommodation with the European Union values as a candidate country. For Gary Jeffrey Jacobson, the concept of constitutional identity is primarily a tool for analyzing and describing constitutional development and change. Constitutional law is always about interpretation. Or as he pointed out, uh, the identity emerges dialogically and it represents a mix of political aspirations and commitments that are expressive of a nation's past 
as well as a determination of those within the society who seek in some ways to transcend this past. Thus, it is very important to underline that constitutional identity is not only shaped by the judiciary, but also by the political process itself. The process of shaping a constitutional identity is driven by this harmony, either in the text of the constitution or in the society itself, in particular, historical changes or political contestations. This formulation is the initial inspiration of this research, of this presentation, especially since the changes to the Constitution of the Republic of North Macedonia were predominantly politically induced rather than legal. My understanding of constitutional identity implies the formal or constructed aspects of the constitutional evolution, starting from the premise that constitutional identity is a special constructed identity related to the constitution itself. So this identity can only be expressed and found in the process of making, applying, and interpreting the constitution itself. So this is the main difference between a constitutional identity and a national identity. Hence, in the light of this uh, presentation, I can conclude that the constitutional identity is the identity of the political system. So I need to, I will present now the changing the nature and the changing aspects of the constitutional identity of my country. So uh, starting from 1991 and the adoption of the first constitution as an independent, sovereign and democratic state, until today, in a completely changed political environment facing the challenges that are coming. The new Macedonian constitution practically brought about a radical systemic change as a result of the changing international and domestic societal and political environment. The list of priorities that were included in the new Macedonian constitution are the following. Incorporation of the scope and type of individual rights, defining the concept of citizenship, giving an explicit emphasis on democracy and the resulting institutional structure, defining the role of the constitutional court, regulating the procedure for constitutional changes. Given the possibility of amending the Macedonian constitution, it belongs to the group of soft constitutions, although the amendment requires a two thirds majority of the total number of member of parliaments. Parliament, or for certain issues, such as a local self-government, decision-making on accession to an amendment to the constitution or to provisions relating to the rights of communities, the Ombudsman, the Security Council, the Judicial Council, the Constitutional Court, the Committee on Inter-Community Relations, provides for the use of a double or badinter majority. The double majority vote, popularly known as the Badinter majority, was named after the fathers of the, this tool, the French lawyer Robert Badinter, is a complex type of qualified majority. The decision making about laws that directly impact the culture, language use, education, personal documentation, and use of symbols in Macedonia requires the majority votes from the attending member of parliaments that belong to non-majority communities in the Republic of North Macedonia. With the constitution of the 1991, the Republic of Macedonia then, today North Macedonia, is constituted as an independent and sovereign democratic and social state that aims to establish and respect the rule of law, guarantees human political economic social and cultural rights, provides peace and coexistence, social justice and economic well-being and prosperity. Or as it stated in Article 8 of the Macedonian Constitution, the fundamental values of the constitutional order of the Republic of North Macedonia are the basic freedoms and rights of the individual and citizen recognized in international law and set down in the Constitution the free expression of national identity, equitable representation of persons belonging to all communities and public bodies at all levels and in other areas of public life, 
the rule of law, the division of state power into legislative, executive, and judicial, political pluralism and free, direct, and democratic elections, the legal protection of property, the freedom of the market and entrepreneurship, humanism, social justice, and solidarity, local self-government, proper urban and rural planning to promote a congenial human environment, as well as ecological protection and development, and the respect for the generally accepted norms of international law, the use cogens norms, as we know. Considering the above mentioned, it is very important to emphasize that all listed fundamental values in the Article 8 of the Constitution of the Republic of North Macedonia are fully aligned with the value system of the European Union and harmonious with the previously mentioned normative power Europe concept, according to Professor Jan Manas. So, in this presentation, you can see the first table, which is, uh, in fact, a comparison between the four elements of the normative power Europe is against the Article 8, or fundamental values of North Macedonia integrated in our constitution. So the normative power Europe concept is structured by founding principles, tasks and objectives, stable institutions, and fundamental rights. These are totally uh, in line with the, uh, our constitution fundamental values, which is in blue. Uh, blue side. Uh, do you see the slide? Yes. Okay. We do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the first amendments to the 1991 constitution were adopted as a result of the diplomatic pressure by the Republic of Greece of the Republic of North Mas over the Republic of North Macedonia. The Assembly of the Republic of North Macedonia on January the 6th, 1992, adopted the first amendment to the Article 49 with the following wording, just to quote it. Quote it. <coughs> in the exercise of this concern, the Republic will not interfere in the sovereign rights of other states or their internal affairs, indicating that the Republic of Macedonia then has no territorial pretensions towards any neighboring state. The borders of the Republic of Macedonia can only be changed in accordance with the constitution and on the principle of free will, as well as in accordance with generally accepted international norms. The next amendment to the constitution was aimed more at advancing the rights of persons in detention and by extensively determining the length of detention until the moment of indictment from the previously provided 19 to uh, 180 days. Thus, Amendment 3 replaced the previous paragraph uh, 5 of Article 12 and provided that detention until the indictment may last by a court decision for a maximum period of 180 days from the day of detention, while after the indictment, detention may be prolonged or determined by a competent court in the case and the procedure prescribed by law. The adoption of this amend, uh, amendment uh, possess a legal content resulting from the com commitments of the Republic of North Macedonia to promote the rule of law, human rights, and freedoms following the general principles of law, such as security and protection of evidence, security of the detainee, continuity, continuity of the procedure, legal certainty, witness protection, etc., etc. The major revision of the Constitution so far has been made since the end of the 2001 military conflicts or war in Macedonia and the end of peace negotiations between the representatives of the two then uh, two largest political parties in Macedonian bloc, SDSM or Social Democratic Union of Macedonia and VAMARO, the PAMANE Internal Revolutionary Macedonian Organization uh, and two of the Albanian ethnic bloc, uh, DPA and PDP. DPA and PDP, under the supervision of the appointed representatives of the European Union and the United States of America, with a promise for quick accession of the Republic of North Macedonia in the European Union and NATO. 
The result of these negotiations was embodied in the Ohrid framework agreement. With this agreement, not only was the 1991 constitution amended and modified, but the foundations were laid for the future redefinition of the Macedonian political system, from a liberal democratic political system with a parliamentary democracy to a moderate consultional political system where the segments or ethnic communities are barriers of power, maybe latent, but barriers of power, and does have the primacy in decision making. Uh, these changes of the Constitution of the Republic of North Macedonia with Ohrid framework agreement uh, largely implied the use of languages and scripts, nurturing ethnic identity, the use of symbols, mechanisms of political decision making in the election of important state officials and bodies, the formation of special parliamentary bodies and, and the like. They covered all those issues that could in some way be in the interest of the members of the ethnic communities who lived in the Republic of North Macedonia. With the adoption of Amendment 4, the original text or of the part of the Macedonian preamble was changed. The original text is one that follows. I will quote it. Taking as the points of departure the historical, cultural, spiritual, and statehood heritage of the Macedonian people and their struggle over centuries for national and social freedom, as well as for the creation of their state, Macedonia is established as a national state of the Macedonian people in which full equality as citizens and permanent coexistence with the Macedonian people is provided for Albanians, Turks, Vlachs, Romanians, and other nationali Romas and other nationalities living in the Republic of Macedonia. The change, the text of the part of this preamble was formulated in the following manner. The citizens, of the Republic of Macedonia, the Macedonian people, as well as citizens living within its borders, who are part of the Albanian people, the Turkish people, the Vlach people, the Serbian people, the Roma people, the Bosniak people, and others taking responsibility for the present and future of their fatherland, and so on and so on. With the adoption of Amendment 5, it was once confirmed that one that on the entire territory of the Republic of North Macedonia and in its international relations, the Macedonian language and its Cyrillic alphabet are obligatory used as an official language, but also any other language spoken by at least 12% to uh, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 20% of the population, meaning ethnic communities, acquires the status of an official language, including its alphabet. For the citizens who speak an official language other than Macedonian language, they can request that their documents be issued except in Macedonian language and its alphabet and in that language and its alphabet under the law. The same principle is applied at the level of local self-government and for the use of languages and scripts spoken by less than 20% of the citizens, which is decided by the bodies of the local self-government units. Amendment 8 stipulated that they have a right freely to express, foster and develop their identity and community attributes and to use their community symbols as a right that is more precisely regulated by the law on the use of community symbols. Also the Republic of the Republic guarantees the protection of the ethnic, cultural, linguistic, and religious identity of all communities in North Macedonia. The members of the communities have the right to learn their language in primary and secondary education in a manner determined by law. In the schools where the education takes place in another language, the Macedonian language and its Cyrillic alphabet are also studied. For laws directly related to culture, the use of languages, education, personal documents, and the use of symbols. The Macedonian Assembly decides by a majority of vote of the member of parliaments attending, with which there must be a majority 
of the votes of the member of parliaments attending who belong to communities, not in the majority in the population of Macedonia. This is known as Badinter majority, as I previously stated. Also in the event of a dispute with the assembly regarding the application of this provision, the Committee on Inter-Community Relations was formed in order to resolve the dispute, eventual dispute. The committee is constituted as a parliamentary body, which through its work has the task to harmonize the possible or the possibly conflicting positions between the ethnic communities to resolve the issues of their interest and in the direction of achieving inter-ethnic harmony, political stability, and the unique functioning of the political system of the Republic of Macedonia in general. This committee is composed of 19 members, of which seven members are from the ranks of Macedonian and Albanian member of parliaments, and one member each from the member of parliaments of Turks, Lachs, Roma, Serbs, and Bosniaks. The real problem that arises from the content of this body is precisely its binational or binational potential, which unjustly enables major majoritarianism by the seven Macedonians and seven Albanians over other ethnic communities and decision making, which is in principle contrary to the fundamental liberal democratic principles. However, in the last instance, the assembly is obliged to take into consideration the appraisals and proposals of this committee and to make the final and to make a final decision regarding them. Uh, based on that, I think that this body, despite its positive and affirmative dimension in terms of promoting inter-ethnic relations, still needs to be redefined in terms of composition. To install the principle of parity in terms of the number of member of parliaments of ethnic communities and thus to disable the systemic possibility of majorization by the Macedonian and Albanian members over the other members of the committee. The principle of double majority regarding the rights of members of ethnic communities in the Republic of North Macedonia is also applied in the part of local self government in the decision-making process by the Council of the local self-government for the election of the Ombudsman, for the election of three members of the Judicial Council out of 15 members, and for three of the nine judges of the Constitutional Court of the Republic of North Macedonia. Amendment 6 regulates the adequate and equitable representation of all ethnic communities in state bodies and other public institutions at all levels, including the Security Council of the President of the Republic for free members and the election of public prosecutors. Amendment 7 regulates the status of religious communities, emphasizing their separation from the state as a principle of secularism <coughs> and, <coughs> I'm sorry, and their equality before the law. Also, religious communities and religious groups are free to establish religious schools and social and charitable institutions in a procedure provided by law. Undoubtedly, the constitutional amendments resulting from the Ohrid Framework Agreement have made a serious modification and redefining of the then Macedonian political system, installing elements of, consoci of consocial democracy, which significantly implies a binational arrangement of relations within the political system, and thus giving primacy to the two largest ethnic communities, the Macedonian and Albanian community. Therefore, the consociality elements have fundamentally transformed the nature of the political system of the Republic of North Macedonia, gradually imposing through constitutional changes a long-term impact on creating a different political culture which tends to reach a common consensus on decision made and their implementation, as well as sharing opinions on the main problems of society and how to address them. Another change in the constitution is made with Amendment 9, uh, 19, which guarantees the freedom and uh, inviolability 
of correspondence and other forms of communication. To more firmly protect the privacy of citizens in all forms of communication, the Constitution stipulates that, I will quote this, only a court decision may, under conditions and in the procedure prescribed by law, authorize non-application of the principle of inviolability of correspondence and other forms of communication in cases where it is indispensable to prevent or, or revealing criminal acts to a criminal investigation or where required in the interests of security and defense of the Republic. Moreover, with the reforms that the Republic of North Macedonia has made in uh, 2005, several amendment, amendments have been adopted, which refer to the judiciary courts and their competencies, election dismissal and the responsibility of the judges, the composition of the Judicial Council, its status, competencies, mandate, misdemeanors, which bodies can impose a sanction, guaranteeing the right to appeal, the public prosecutor's office, the application of the rule of equitable representation in these bodies, and so on and so on. As for Amendment 31, it can be said that it was adopted just before the 2009 presidential election, and it provided that a candidate is elected president if he or she wins a majority of the votes of those who voted, provided more than 40 percent of the registered voters voted. This constitutional intervention was confirmed as adequate because in the presidential elections that followed, the president was elected in the second round, narrowly exceeding the 40% uh, threshold. The last to be adopted is Amendment uh, 32, adopted on April 12, 2011, which refers to the fact that a citizen of the Republic of Macedonia cannot be deprived of citizenship, nor can be expelled from the Republic of Macedonia. A citizen of the Republic of Macedonia cannot be extradited to another country, except based on a ratified international agreement upon a decision of the court. This amendment is explained by the efforts and tendencies for dealing with organized crime and corruption, as well as by the process for harmonization of Macedonian judiciary and legislation with European and international agreements and European Union legislation in general. It can be concluded that the changes of the constitutional identity of the Republic of North Macedonia since independence was a complex process to establish, build and adapt its constitution to the circumstances that occurred in a certain time, bearing in mind the realization of the most important national strategic goal, full integration of the Republic of North Macedonia and NATO in European Union as well. After this, uh, constitutional changes. Uh, on June 12, 2018, the agreement was concluded between the Republic of then, North, uh, then uh, Republic of Macedonia and the Republic of Greece under the auspices of the United Nations, also known as PRESPA agreement, which resulted in several amendments. Amendments with the numbers 33, 34, 45, and 36 of the Constitutional Republic of North Macedonia, adopted by the Macedonian Assembly at the session held in January 11, 2019. Uh, these amendments of the Constitution of the Republic of Macedonia are an integral part of the Constitution of North Macedonia and entered into force upon the entry of final agreement on uh, resolving the differences described in resolution 817 from 1993 and 845 from 1993 of the United Nations Security Council to end the validity of the 1995th interim accord between uh, North Macedonia and Greece and to establish a strategic partnership between the parties and the ratification of the NATO accession protocol by Greece to the final agreement. The purpose of these amendments to the Constitution is in the implementation of the final agreement with Greece, 
uh, which should enable the accession of the Republic of North Macedonia to the European uh, Union and NATO. Following the final agreement with uh, Greece, the amendments are to enter into force one on the day of the ratification of the agreement and the protocol on NATO accession by the Parliament of the Republic of Greece. Following the amendment 33 to the constitution, the words, I will quote this, the Republic of Macedonia are replaced with the words, the Republic of North Macedonia. And <clears throat> the word Macedonia is replaced with North Macedonia, except in article 36 of the constitution of the Republic of North Macedonia, which refers to the particular social security rights to veterans of the anti-fascist war and all Macedonian national liberation wars in the past to war invalids to those expelled and imprisoned for the ideas of the separate national identity of the Macedonian people and Macedonian statehood, as well as to members of, of their families. Due to the harmonization with the PRESPA agreement, concrete changes are made in the preamble as well. Enlisting the state and legal traditions are appointed legal decisions of PASNOM, which means Antifascistico Sobranie za Narodno Slobodovanje na Makedonija, uh, namely in English, Antifascist Assembly for People Liberation of Macedonia, which are listed in the proclamation from the first session of ASNOM to the Macedonian people in 1945, after the liberation from uh, the fascist aggressors in Mas during the Second World War. With Amendment 40, uh, 34 in the preamble of the Constitution of the Republic of North Macedonia, the words citizens living within its borders who are shall be deleted. And the words, the decisions of the ASNOM shall be replaced with the words, the legal decisions cited in the proclamation of the first session of the ASNOM to the Macedonian people about the said session of the ASNOM, the words which express the will to create an independent sovereign state and the Ohrid framework agreement shall be added after the word year and the words have decided to shall be deleted. So the final agreement confirms the existing border between the Republic of North Macedonia and Greece as a permanent and inviolable international border, whereby neither of the two countries undertake to have nor to support any claims to any part of the territory of the other country, nor claims to change their mutually existing boundary. In addition, the Republic of North Macedonia and Greece has undertaken not to support any claims made by third parties. They committed themselves to respect the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence of another state, and do not support any actions of third parties directed against the sovereignty, territorial integrity, or political independence of another state. The two states <clears throat> have also undertaken by the purposes and principles of the Charter of the United Nations to refrain from threats or use of force, including threats or use of force with the intent to violate their existing boundaries. Article 3 of the Constitution regulates that the territory of the Republic of North Macedonia is indivisible and inalienable. <coughs> the current border of the Republic of North Macedonia is inviolable. The Republic of Macedonia has no territorial claims to the neighboring countries, as was acknowledged in this agreement. The border of North Macedonia can be changed only per the Constitution and on the principle uh, of voluntariness and in accordance with the generally accepted international use for against norms. Furthermore, the Republic of North Macedonia and Greece undertake that no provision of the constitution can or should not be interpreted in a way that constitutes or will at any time constitute the grounds for interference in the internal affairs of the other state in any form or of, for any reason, including the protection of the status and rights of any persons who are not its citizens. Also, I must uh, underline that after the implementing of PRESPA agreement, Macedonia, North Macedonia became 13 
member state of NATO, but also we was very hopeful for European Union, but there, but there then came Bulgarians with their veto. So the present incoherent attitudes of the European Union and some of its member states towards the Republic of North Macedonia session process causes the emergence of Eurodefetism in Macedonian society and a feeling of distrust towards the European Union due to the constitutional and political concessions which I presented made so far by the Republic of North Macedonia as I previously presented. Despite the evident obstacles and constraints, the last European Commission report for the Republic of North Macedonia manifests a predominantly positive attitude for the advancement of the integration process, taking into account the political Copenhagen criteria, claiming that North Macedonia continued to implement EU-related reforms throughout the reporting period. Efforts continued to strengthen democracy and the rule of law, including by activating existing checks and balances and through discussions and debates in key policy and legislative issues. Opposition parties remained engaged in the parliament and supported key issues of common national interest, such as EU-related reforms and the NATO integration process, which North Macedonia joined in March 2020. The inter-ethnic situation remained calm overall. Efforts were made to strengthen inter-ethnic relations and to implement the Ohrid Framework Agreement, which ended the 2001 conflict and provide the framework for preserving the multi-ethnic character of the society. Considering the economic Copenhagen criteria, the Republic of North Macedonia, according to European Commission, is at a good level of preparation in developing a functioning market economy but made limited progress during the reporting period. Economic growth accelerated in 2019 as an investment pickup, but since up April 2020, the COVID-19 crisis has left its mark on the economy and public finances as well. Integration with the European Union in trade and investment deepened further, as well as far as the ability to take on the obligations of membership as a legislative alignment. Besides the provisions in the report, the lack of consensus in the European Council has again blocked the accession process of the Republic of North Macedonia, regardless of the Macedonian concessions and change to its constitutional identity. This is because to join the European Union, the applicant country needs to gain a unanimous vote in the Council or as Article 49, Title 6 of the Lisbon Treaty stipulates, any European state which respects the values, as I said before, of the European Union, and it is committed to promoting them, may apply to become a member state of the Union. The applicant state shall address its application to the Council, which shall act unanimously after consulting the Commission and after receiving the consent of the European Parliament, which shall act by a majority of its component members. In respect of such decision-making by the Council, Eurofederalist thinker and my good colleague and friend, Leo Klinkers, stated that making decisions based on the principle of unanimity and therefore with the right of veto is a tool for EU politicians who do not feel like guardians of European interests. Adherence to that principle is one of the signs that the European Union is acting solely based on national interests, not from a, an internalized awareness of European interests, but solely based on national interests. Considering the fulfillment of the political, economic, and legal criteria, which is added to table two, I will, this is table two, and other institutional instruments, according to the report, the Republic of North Macedonia has already reached the level for starting accession negotiations with the European Union. Regarding the regional cooperation, the North Macedonia maintained its good relations with 
other enlargement countries and participate actively in regional initiatives. And also the report stated that it is important to continue implementing bilateral agreements, including PRESPA agreement and a treaty on good neighborly relations with Bulgaria. The optimistic approach of the European Commission for the relations between North Macedonia and Bulgaria was on an upward trend, optimistic trend, especially since Bulgaria and North Macedonia co-chaired the Berlin process in 2020, aimed at stepping up regional cooperation in the Western Balkans. Also, Bulgaria provides support to the country in the context of the COVID-19 crisis, including by providing medical equipment and supporting the rep repatriation of, stand uh, of stranded citizens. Immediately after that, the Bulgarian government, outside the provisions of the Treaty of, on Good Neighborly Relations launched a long and stiff set of conditions for the progress of North Macedonia towards European Union talks. The Bulgarian government's so-called framework position listed more than 20 demands with an excessive nationalistic and discriminatory sound and a timetable for North Macedonia to fulfill them during the session talks. Generally speaking, the content of this framework position of the Bulgarian government, which is totally outside of the Treaty on Good Neighborly Relations, directed nebulous and discriminatory demands to the Republic of North Macedonia. I will uh, cite some of them. Bulgaria insists on the fundamentally Bulgarian character of the historical Vomero movement. The Vomero means Internal Macedonia Revolutionary Organization, who was founded during the Ottoman rule in Macedonia. A bitter dispute continues also over whether leading figures in the rising, including Goce Delchev as one of the Macedonian national apostles, are to be considered Macedonian or Bulgarian. The Macedonian language is another point of dispute, alongside its long-standing claim that Macedonians are Bulgarians, Bulgaria also sees the Macedonian language as a dialect of Bulgarian, insisting its differences are the result of deliberately anti-Bulgarian policies pursued by the former Yugoslav state. Or as Bulgarians uh, knows to say, Makedonski od jazik je srpski jazik pišuva na srpska pišačka mašina. Or in English, Macedonian language is Bulgarian language, written on Serbian typewriter. So, you know, this is the most Bulgarian nationalist stand on Macedonian language. Okay, doesn't matter. This Bulgarian attitude was met with sharp reactions from the public in North Macedonia, which further heated the overall atmosphere. In the meantime, official Sofia accused Skopje of hate speech, freezing infrastructure projects and not implementing a bilateral treaty on good neighbor relations signed in, well, uh, 2017. Contrary to that, former pri uh, president of the Macedonian government, Zoran Zaev, in order to calm the situation, stated that we will continue to fight against hate speech, provocation, etc., etc., in order to calm down the emotions between the uh, both both sides. Consequently, Bulgaria vetoed the opening of accession negotiations with North Macedonia, warning that it would not tolerate the distortion of historical events, documents and artifacts, as well as the role and views of personalities from Bulgarian history. And with that came a complete scandalous surprise for North Macedonia and its allies, especially the United States, because Bulgaria previously supported the accession of Macedonia in NATO without intending to block the European Union accession process afterward. This new situation was evaluated by the Croatian president Zoran Milanovic as entering an intimate space. And he said that I will openly oppose that, of course, within the scope and reach of my word. Macedonia was forced to change its constitution, its name, and now it is an impossible situation, said Zoran Milanovic. 
In the meantime, the German ambassador to Skopje, Anke Holstein, said that a country holding hostage 26 countries and harms the entire European Union when it comes to the enlargement. This is Bulgaria. The descriptive method which I used in my research aims uh, aimed to describe that North Macedonia since the beginning of its Euro integration process in 1999 made serious constitutional and political concessions and compromises to fully integrate the European Union. Also, North Macedonia continues to follow the European Union values and norms and to reform its national system in line with the EU acquis, as are mentioned in the table in front of you. The problem with Bulgaria came as a surprise, destroying the momentum for North Macedonia to start with EU accession talks shortly after the painful compromise with Greece on the name dispute. NATO rewarded that with granting full membership for North Macedonia, but the EU failed, seriously deviated from its promises, declarations, and efforts to open the European future for the Macedonian citizens, and thus to stabilize, finally to stabilize the region. The European Union has once again proved to be hostage to the national interests of its member states and therefore incapable of pursuing its own post-national EU interests and objectives, as Leo Klinkers uh, emphasized. The blockade of Bulgaria is not only a blockade of the European Union accession process of Macedonia, but also a blockade of the European Union enlargement policy as the most powerful instrument for diffusion of its axiological influence in the region, leaving the region at the mercy of new emerging powers, such as Russia and China. The surveying method, which I, was, which I <coughs> applied in this research, and the technique that it was used is the online survey examination. As regards the question, how important do you think is the integration of the Republic of North Macedonia and European Union? 39.2% uh, answered very positively. Grading the integration of North Macedonia to the European Union is the most important national objective, as opposed to nine, uh, as opposed to 9.2% percent of those who believe that the European Union has no significance for North Macedonia. This is the following chart. Hence, the importance of the European Union for the future of North Macedonia is once again confirmed as the most important national objective, which, despite everything else, still attracts public support. It is very, that is a very good uh, aspect of the problem. In parallel, the online survey requested a response about the knowledge of the European Union values, which is very important to emphasize. 35.4% of the respondents responded that they are familiar with the European Union values. This may be a small percentage of what is required, but it is still good that it dominates over the other answers. This is the second chart. This trend shows that uh, on the one hand, the European Union is not present enough on the ground in North Macedonia and does not pay enough attention to maintaining the Euro-optimistic mood among Macedonian citizens. On the other hand, this shows that the Macedonian political, <coughs> uh, excuse me, political elites are not sufficiently engaged in finding ways to acquire Macedonian citizens with the EU values. The absence of promotion of EU values from both the European Union and North Macedonian political elites undoubtedly contributes to the low level of knowledge of this most important component of the Euro integration process. The lack of knowledge and ignorance of the EU value system trivializes and relativizes the overall essence of the Euro integration and make it sterile and unattract inattractive. <clears throat> Subsequently, 
the online survey requested a response about the EU double standards concerning the Republic of North Macedonia, because the Macedonian citizens predominantly feel manipulated, uh, lied by the European Union. The European Union always demands something new from North Macedonia, but never delivers. 71.5% agreed that the European Union has double standards when it comes to the European Union membership of North Macedonia. Only a few of them, 21.5%, uh, responded that such a situation is not true. You, you can see those results on the following table free. Okay. <clears throat> this kind of incoherent attitude of the European Union towards North, North Macedonia also causes a feeling of betrayal of the European Union values and expectations of the Macedonian citizens. 82.3% of the respondents as were answered that this is a betrayal of the European Union values because it comes right after the most painful compromise that Macedonia has made for EU integration, the change of its national name and thus its constitutional identity after almost 30 years of arduous negotiation with Greece on the name issue. The surprise stacked by Bulgaria only intensified fatigue of the Macedonian citizens for EU accession, or as 61.5% of the respondents think that this situation only contributes to the creation of a soft Eurosceptic mood in the Republic of North Macedonia, 32.3% think that this situation maybe will contribute to such a mood and only 5.4% of respondents denied it. <clears throat> soft Euroscepticism is where there is not a principled objection to European integration or EU membership, but where concerns on one or a number of policy areas, the enlargement process in this case, lead to the expression of qualified opposition to the European Union. This mood is mostly driven by the reaction of Macedonian public opinion to the Bulgarian provocations and the feeling of being discriminated against by the European Union. This could be better qualified as Euro defeatism rather than Euro skepticism, describ describing the stagnant and uncertain condition of the Republic of North Macedonia concerning the EU accession process previously blocked by Greece and today by Bulgaria. Obviously, time has changed since the EU was established and the European Union should change too, as well. Without that, the enlargement process threatens to be deadlocked. The stability of Western Balkans will be jeopardized and the EU values will be betrayed. The time has come for the EU to take off the Janus mask. Uh, with uh, two, uh, Janus, you know, is a god with two faces. The EU must no longer play hypocritically concerning North Macedonia and must do everything to unblock the integration process and at the same time to cancel the irrational and scandalous conflict with Bulgaria because such a dispute does not fit into the 21st century. The dispute over the ethnic and national identity of a certain people is completely against the EU values and as such must not be allowed in contemporary Europe. Based on the previously mentioned, I definitely can conclude that the Bulgarian opposition in the European Council blocks the EU accession process of the Republic of North Macedonia and thus interrupts, interrupted the procedural diffusion of EU normative power. This situation provoked negative reactions amongst the Macedonian and wider public, endangering and, and uh, a defeatist mood concerning the European Union. As indicated in the presentation, the feeling of discrimination and subordination due to the Bulgarian and previously Greek blockage in the European Council provoked a Euro defeatist mood amongst the Macedonian public. This mood describes the stagnant condition of North Macedonia concerning the EU accession process caused by the interruption of the EU normative power by a Bulgarian veto. 
Uh, namely, this problem can easily be, be overcome solely by unblocking the EU accession negotiations. This should not be discouraging for the EU integration process of the Republic of North Macedonia, but should serve as an incentive to undertake additional activities in the integration process and deepening of the partnership with the EU as a whole, as well as the individual member states. Moreover, that the Republic of North Macedonia has made serious constitutional changes to align and to harmonize its constitutional identity towards the European Union uh, values, norms, et cetera, et cetera, since, since its independence until today. Thank you very much.